We are back, viewers, with more Alive and Well. Once again, whether you're catching us on DSE TV 97, Comcast, oh. Muskegon, or you got us on the net, either YouTube, DSE TV, Muskegon, or our new website, DSE TV.com. This is Alive and Well, a brand new program, and we are at Sightseers Radio in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And this time, I'm speaking with Ken number two. <laughs> and Ken, you are the president of Sightseers, and you are also the engineer here. And according to Ruth, your mom, this was basically your idea initially. How did you, I just want to ask you personally, how you got this idea? And had you been interested in radio your whole life? How did this work? Well, I started in radio when I was three. Oh, wow. Or, or my, my folks started in radio when I was three, I should say. Tell me about that. What, what did they do? Uh, they, they did uh, a daily radio program on a local station. Neat! And then eventually they built a local station. Really? What, is, what was the station? Which is, well, it, it was WKLW. Uh huh. Now it's uh, 95.7 at W. Light. Yeah, right. Okay, what did WKLW, what did it broadcast? Uh, for pretty much fine arts. Um, Neat. Kind of like a BLV? Yeah, kind of like that. Cool. Only in the olden days it was not quite as warm and friendly it was everything was by the clock and that sort of thing mm -hmm. um, so you learned all the technicals then growing up yep, yep you learned did you actually engineer growing up what did you do did you come after school to the radio station and work how did you yeah all through uh, high school we worked a shift every day wow and no kidding so you were were you DJing too everything or just well I wouldn't call it DJing but we were playing the music playing the music okay so you right. didn't have, yeah did you actually have to talk on the over the radio uh, as a young one only to read commercials now and then really right. okay so that got you interested in it and what how did it evolve into this what happened uh, well they they eventually sold the station mm -hmm. and I went to work for TV 13 uh, and some many years later uh, when dad was retiring uh, you know when someone's retired they kind of if they have something to do mm -hmm. then they they seem to last longer yes and happier have more, more right. fulfilled life right so we suggested to them that they could either start a international shortwave station or uh, service for the blind and, re and uh, reading disabled uh-huh so they chose the latter, and so the, the sightseer kind of started from there. We were able to get hold of a sub-channel uh, and put the studio together, and on the air they went. Wow. So now, technically, do you guys have a low-power radio license, or what is, your, what is it like through the FCC? How does that work? Well, technically, we don't have a license. Okay, because you're a side channel from Blue Lake. Well, Blue Lake has the license. Okay. And they allow us to use their sub-channel. Okay. And explain real quickly to anybody, any of our engineering audio buffs out there, what the side channel is. Uh, the side channel is a, uh, well, it's called SCA, uh, and it's... I need to come up with what that acronym stands for. Um, and I forget at the moment. It has, a regular channel has how many hertz did you say? Well, a regular uh, FM channel is 100, 100 kilohertz wide. Kilohertz, okay. Kilohertz. Yeah, I'm, I'm over, not the audio buff, by the way. So. The, 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 the overall <laughs> bandwidth that an FM station has is 200 kilohertz. Okay. Okay, so there's 100 kilohertz left. So of that, 100 kilohertz, which is 50 on each side, uh -huh. there's room for sub channels. Sub channels. Okay, and those are the channels that you have to have the special radio for, right? right. So we have a sub channel, a sub carrier, a s second carrier to the, the main carrier, and that's what we provide programs for, and you need a special radio for that. That is so cool. Now tell me how. Um, Sam was was touching on this about your your new internet radios and that basically you take the brains out of the old computers and make explain to me a little bit what your internet radio is because I know you can pull you up online and and listen to you right online but you but he was saying that if somebody just wants an internet radio they just hit the button and go how does that work right well 
We needed to have uh, radios that were uh, that we could provide to people who couldn't afford to purchase a radio. Mm -hmm. So, in talking with uh, some of our engineering colleagues, uh, made a comment. Well, why don't we just take an old computer and make it go with that? Okay, okay fine. So one of the guys uh, by the name of Mike Majeski pulled out some, uh, dug in on the internet and pulled out some software ideas and uh, put on some pieces of software together so that from a, from a CD, any old computer can play that CD and uh, get the sites here through the internet. So we took old uh, computers, took the hard drives out, made it so that they didn't need a keyboard, a mouse, or a monitor, just a hard drive, or just a uh, CD drive, add speakers, plug it into the internet, put in the CD, and away it goes. That is excellent. How cool. So, so basically then, they can, do, they can get the radio if they're local, and they get it from you guys, okay. or if they want to catch you via the web, they go, now how do they do that if they just want to get you on without the radio, if they just want to go over their computer, where do they go to get you? Uh, they can go to uh, the sightseer.org. Okay. And then right now you have to push a button that says listen, and then when you get to the listen page, you have to click on the, on the logo. We're working on changing that so it's much easier to get to. And if, of course, if you have the internet radio, you don't have to worry about that, right? right? Internet just radio, just the button and go. plug it in and turn it on. And you're all hooked up. That's really neat. What a, what a cool way to go. Tell me a little bit about what it takes to keep this place going as far as the engineering. Are you in charge of the streaming? Um, is it something that you can program and just let go through the night? Do you have to keep, is it at your home, some of the gear, or is it all here? How does that work? All the gear is here. Okay. Um, the streaming, everything is done from here. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll work much of the day and sometimes into the evening loading all the programs so that we can walk away. Okay. And the program, like right now, the, the station is operated with a, from a computer. It's it's keeping track of what time it is, what programs need to air at what time. Okay. So it, the sites here is maybe you might consider it in into an, a few segments. We have the volunteers that come in, record the books and newspapers and materials. Once it's recorded, we take that material in uh, as files, prepare it, put it into the computer, and the computer plays it out, and that from from there, it goes to the subcarrier for the tra for transmission to the transmitter, mm -hmm. and then it also goes to the web uh, for, streaming. for streaming. So, do you have any techs that you train that help you volunteer techs, or do you pretty much have to handle all this? Uh, anytime we can, we'd love to train some techs. So you're uh, there aren't many that there's there's we're anticipating one joining us next week to yeah. start. Do you ever take interns? Uh, yeah. What would be the qualifications? Just somebody who is pursuing a career in maybe me media broadcasting of some kind? Or? Uh, this is a good place to learn broadcast uh, because we follow all the, the general rules of broadcast and, and uh, both, both from good engineering and good sound, that sort of thing. Uh, and we we don't have the pressure of commercials and all of that sort of thing. That's what people like, <laughs> not the pressure of commercials. Uh, Tell me this, what do you think, what, where would where would you like to see Sightseers be in five years from now? What would your goals be? Uh, that it is able to be heard uh, all across West Michigan uh, in any facility or home that folks could, could tune it in, whether it's on the web or uh, with a special radio uh, that it's it's available to them. Very cool. 
Well, this has been tremendous. There's a whole lot more to this than a microphone and a mixing board, huh? Uh -huh. <laughs> Although it began that way, right? Yes. It began that way. Thank you very much for this. I know you got to get back to editing, but I really appreciate you taking a few moments to spend with us. And if anybody, once again, would like to either volunteer here, either as a broadcast tech or maybe as a reader or doing the office work, learning or an editor. Yeah. What about a phone number and a website one more time? Uh, the website is thesightseer.org. All one word, <laughs> right? <laughs> and the phone number is 616-235-0020. Okay. You heard it here on Alive and Well, West Michigan. Thank you so much for tuning in, whether it be TV or the net. We are once again at Sightseer Radio in Grand Rapids, Michigan on Sheldon. What is the address here, by the way? 213 Sheldon 213 Southeast. 213 Sheldon Southeast. It used to be the Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, and now it is Sightseer Radio. You are watching, you have been watching, Alive and Well. And we will see you next time.